Hey, all you viewers, welcome to the Stock Pick Profits Market Update for June 11, 2018. It's Monday. Uh, it's a holiday in Honolulu, but everybody in the rest of the world is in full operation. So it's a little flat day on the market today, right? Uh, you know, the Dow ended up a few points. The S&P was just up slightly. Yeah, it's kind of flat. And we're going to talk about that because it, it, the weekend played really important into this. Uh, if, unless you've been living in a cave. Um, you know, Trump was at the G7. Now, when he left the G7, uh, there was a lot of hurt feelings. Um, you know, you have to understand Trump's side and that there are all these very big trade deficits. And a lot of these countries, of course, they're allies, they're our friends, and we want to have very, very good relationships with them. But it's unbalanced right now. Um, and that's all he's looking to do is to try and bring some balance to it. Of course, a lot of these leaders have been living well for a long time on these uh, trade deficiencies. And so it's uncomfortable. Change is very uncomfortable for them. So they're lashing out. Um, maybe some of it's fair, maybe some of it's not. But the bottom line is um, Trump is just looking out for America on this. So, you know, this kind of started a media firestorm. And really, it wasn't much about true facts it was it was it was opinion based it, and it was anti trump it was very aggressive um and this created kind of a negative environment trump kind of just came out of the g7 and now he's in singapore so let's move forward tomorrow he has his big meeting with uh kim that'll be actually the meeting that they that everybody's been waiting for today was kind of preparations and all that kind of stuff so that's a big event and we're going to keep an eye on that and you should be too if you're trading um and that plays into our market update for the week um what do we think about the market going forward well you know, right now it's kind of a teetering time. Um, we just came off a big week where the market pushed up real high. You know, it's a very, very calm news cycle. Uh, so going into the week, we want to be cautious because tomorrow we have the meeting with Kim. Nobody's really committing one way or the other. Uh, expectations, it seems like some some people are coming out with these very high expectations. One meeting, all of a sudden, uh, an armistice and is removed and a peace treaty is put in, denuclearization, things like that. Trump, in the over the weekend, if you're following him and you're actually listening to him, you know he's been kind of tapering those down because he knows. He knows that this could be a... Uh, oh, hey, Severe. Welcome, welcome. No, no, you're not. Uh, Severe was uh, actually dropped in unexpectedly with when we're doing some testing but welcome welcome this is the real live show um so hey hey roland hey Ro oh we're, i'm getting inundated here so you know that we're using this software and stuff and we're getting used to it so you guys bear with us um but some important information so now Trump is in Singapore and tomorrow is the big meeting with Kim. So we'll see how it goes. Like we said, Trump is trying to taper expectations and that's the smart thing to do. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Now, as investors, we kind of want to step back and be a little cautious in this. What if nothing happens? What if Trump storms out of the meeting? What if it's a, it's some kind of trap? or that that they're trying to set to trick him into something and he gets upset let's just be very cautious right now and the other reason too is uh we're having we have a fed meeting on thursday the federal reserve is meeting now that's important too because you see we we're getting all this economic growth uh things are going very well but that budget is is, is really the uh the elephant in the room right now uh, and so on Thursday, we want to see what the Fed says, because what if they get dovish? They've been pretty aggressive so far, and they've got, what, three or four more rate cuts uh, planned for the rest of the year. What if those don't play true? Uh, you know, then that'll be good, right? That'll be good for certain uh, arenas like tech and stuff. But if you're in banks and stuff, that's probably going to hurt banks. Um, there's also the marijuana trade, you know, uh, we'll talk about what we're playing going forward and it involves a couple of marijuana plays and we're going to kind of give you a little tips on it. You know, it's some value to the show, but 
even marijuana, there's big, big things happening. Canada has legalized it. Uh, Elizabeth Warren has jumped on with a Republican uh, uh, po- an, uh, Republican cohort from the other side of the aisle to change legislation so that uh, the federal government doesn't beat up banks. Uh, the banks can start taking transactions from the marijuana industry. And there's just a lot of good things. There's a big article about Trump has come out and he said that he's all good with the legalization of it. Um, and you remember with the marijuana trade, you know, it's been a lot of building and in the, up until now, there's been some that have blown up thousands of percents. Um, but really the big trade you should be setting up for right now. And that's what we've done. We've been buying a certain marijuana stock for about a year now, accumulating it. Uh, and we just started accumulating another one. And, and you should be doing this too. Why wait to the last minute and chase, chase, right? Um, be smart and get in early. But you could see in December, the marijuana industry, all the stocks started to just blow up. And then at the end of December, beginning of January, Jeff Sessions came out and made that uh, statement that the federal government is going to prosecute these people Uh as usual, which is a total 360 from uh, the Obama administration, which said that, yeah, the law is the law, but we're not going to enforce it. Now, that doesn't help banks. Banks cannot take uh, money produced from illegal product. And that doesn't change whether the federal government comes out and says they're not going to prosecute certain things that are associated with the drug. uh, That still doesn't loosen regulations and they can't take advantage of this. So there's a lot of good things going in marijuana. But anyways, Jeff Session came out on that that January day and he's made that statement. And ever since then, the volume has come out of the industry. It's not that people are selling marijuana stocks right now. It's just nobody's buying because that euphoria kind of wore off and they got real leery. I mean, this is Jeff Sessions, the attorney general for the United States coming out and saying they're going to prosecute. Well, since then, we've been getting some nice flurries of news, right? And it's starting to catch and Canada's legalization is kicking in. So you want to be in stocks. Now, what are we in? Uh, We talked about it before. We've talked about um, United Cannabis, CNAB. That's one of uh, the ones that that we really like going forward. And we just uh, released to our all of our subscribers another play that we've been building. And we'll talk a little bit more specifically about that going forward in later shows. But for right now, that's a special pick for our subscribers. Now, if you missed that pick or you wanted to be in on that pick, uh, if you look at the scrolling bar, that'll tell you how you can get involved. Um, so let's, let's move forward. We've talked about marijuana. We've talked about what's going on in the news cycle with the news cycle. Let's just kind of step back right now, um, and just see how things gel out. Okay. Uh, that's probably the prudent thing to do. Let's talk about the dollar because the dollar's had such a good run right now, right? It's, it's really peaking and stuff. Is the dollar still a buy? Well, if you're if you're asking the the trading team at uh, stockpickprofits.com, actually, we think right now the dollar is a sale, uh, a sell. So we're actually looking at some plays to capitalize on that. The dollar was a little soft today, but it, it hasn't made its big move down. Um, again, if you want to be on, on in on those kind of plays and you know how well we do. Go ahead and click that link or uh, type that in your browser. So, look. We think the dollar's a sale, and and that's the reason for that is a lot of things. Look at all this geo pressure and stuff, um, and that brings us to our next subject, which is gold. We're getting a lot of questions about gold. Um, why isn't gold moving at this point? I mean, you've had all this uh, global stuff, like with the trade war words, um, just a lot of stuff going on, and yet gold just can't break out. It hasn't broke out one way or the other. It hasn't broke down. It hasn't broke up. It's kind of just trading sideways. So the big question is, which way is it going to break? Now, we're short gold right now. Or or actually, we're long gold a little bit. I'm sorry. We're long gold a little bit, but it's just a hedge. Uh, We've got some option contracts about two months out, not far out of the money. And we're just going to keep those in our pocket. And then we wanted to talk about something, gold versus Bitcoin. Um, Now, we'll get to the comments here in a second. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Please post questions. Please post your comments. Um, I'll address them right after I'm finished with the uh, update. And keep them coming. Keep them coming. It's a lot of fun. Uh, So gold. There's a lot of we've we've the trade team. 
decided to mention this because there's a big, big thing right now, right? Of course, crypto, right? Crypto. People are excited about crypto, and there, there's no reason not to be. It's a, it's a new world. It's fun. Um, it's a new experience for all of us. Uh, nobody really understands it, so it's just a lot of fun. Now, um, the big conversation is, is Bitcoin becoming the replacement for gold as a safe haven. Now, we don't feel that it is, and, and there's a lot of reasons. The biggest reason is the Bitcoin trade is just not mainstream enough. It's a complicated trade to get into. It's a complicated setup to get into. Now, before you guys start inundating us with, e with messages about, ah, I know the easy way to do it, that's great. Um, but we know the easiest way, and that's to open a brokerage account and click two buttons and you own something, right? You can't do that with Bitcoin. Then there's the conversion back to U.S. dollars or whatever your, your currency is. So we don't feel that Bitcoin is taking that role. Bitcoin is still operating autonomously from everything else, and it it's its own deal. Uh, right now, Bitcoin... Uh, to be very, very frank about Bitcoin, and this is just the stock pick profits trading team's opinion, um, Bitcoin is nothing more than the value is nothing more than the attitude of the buyers and sellers. That's all it is. Um, there's no way to really value, give it a valuation. There's no real way. Yeah, everybody talks about these advancements, how it's changing the banking system, how it's eliminating the central banks and taking out the middleman. That's all fantastic. But put that in a dollar value. You know, it's not like you a company where you where you have earnings, you have sales, you have revenues, you have balance sheets and things like that. Bitcoin does not have that. Even with the dollar, there's certain things attached to the dollar that you can use for uh, for trading purposes. Right. Bitcoin doesn't have that. It really if you watch Bitcoin, especially since it's hit that 19, 19 grand um, a few months back, maybe about a year back. Um, if you look at Bitcoin, um, it. it it moves when there's hysteria, right? It goes down when there's hysteria. There's no fundamental change in it. It's just moved because people are excited and they're buying it. So we, we don't like that kind of asset as, a, as an investment. So uh, if you ask us, gold is still the standard for protection. And uh, Bitcoin is still an autonomous thing. There's no way to value it. If you're making Bitcoin money in Bitcoin, awesome, awesome bang that all day long. But as far as uh, our company and our philosophy, uh, we'd rather just stay with the gold as far as a hedge and things like that. Um, now, as Bitcoin becomes more mainstream and, you know, there's brokerages starting to add funds and things like that, making it easy to trade. We'll look at it again. But right now uh, we're we're successful with what we do. Why would we change it? Why would we add something with uncertainty like that? So that's the Bitcoin uh, story and the gold story. So basically to sum up the market update, you know, it's a really, it's a wait and see Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, let's see how this first day of the meeting with uh, Kim and Trump goes. Uh, if that goes well, then, you know, maybe we'll start taking little pokes and stuff. We still think the market is in an uptrend. We still think we are bullish. Uh, that's uh, our our sentiment right now is that we are bullish and still in the uptrend. And until we see something substantial, uh, we're not going to change that. Bull markets don't turn on a dime. Uh, it takes a long time for them to turn. It takes a long time for them to uh, change the trend. So right now we're playing it for up. Of course, we do play puts and stuff when we see it up. Uh, it's warranted. But that's the way we're looking at the market right now. Now, again, uh, we'll put the little link down here. If you guys want to get involved, get involved. So let's go to the comments. All right. Uh, let's talk. Let's start right down uh, with Sever. <laughs> Welcome, Sever. Sever is one of our newest clients. Um, very smart man. It, you know, anybody that joins the service is smart. But for other reasons besides that, he's a smart man, but he's very in tune and stuff. And he just joined the service. We were testing the, the the systems for the broadcast and he accidentally crashed into it. So you're in the right one this time. Okay. But welcome. Welcome. Thanks a lot. Roland Tupula. You are another member of the uh, service. Uh, it's doing very well with the service. Um, Roland is a great example for all you viewers. Let me tell you a little story. 
Um, Roland is a great example of what it takes to be successful in trading. Uh, you know, a lot of people, uh, you, you hear it, uh, um, a lot of people, I'm sorry, I was reading a comment, but a lot of people, you know, they think that you can make money just magically. It's not true. There always is a certain amount of effort you have to put into to make money. And Roland's a perfect example of that, the diligence that it takes and the patience. You know, it took him a while to get uh, uh, his brokerage account set up. And he was already in communication with us. And so what he did was he went and paper traded and he, he just got better at things. And then by the time he was able to open his account, he was a master. And, and he's been making money ever since. So congratulations, Roland, man. We, we love you. Hope you're having a good experience. Um, then Severa says, hey, Roland. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, you thought it was a real thing. No, this is the real thing. Uh, Marco, welcome. Thank you for the thumbs up. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for your support. And we've got Samuel, Samuel Levitz. Uh, um, what's up, gang? What is the link in case people want to join the service? Okay. Give the people what they want. <laughs> uh, let's scroll up a little bit. Sana is here. Sana is here from Sweden, all the way from Sweden, thousands of miles away. Uh, never, never had anything to do with any kind of investments. Uh, sometimes there's some, not a lot of confidence in trading and stuff like that. Sana is making, uh, is about to make money. She's set up her account. And again, the, the diligence and the patience and the drive. Look, you need to do a certain amount of footwork. Don't believe any kind of marketing. Don't believe any kind of stories where, oh, you can just make money like that. It just doesn't work like that, the world. The world does not work like that. And I think all of you know that. Um, so, hey, good evening, everyone. Good. Glad to see Pat live. I comb my hair. I shaved. They let me go on camera. They're crazy over here. They let me on camera. Uh, so, at Nick Carson. Nick, welcome. Welcome and thank you for joining the show. Uh, great picture, Nick, of you there with the young lady. Uh, fantastic. Um, and then Sever just posting a link. Uh, and then, yeah, you know what? There you go. Losing money with crypto is very easy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Look. Um, let's talk about a little that a little bit more. You know, crypto is a twenty four seven market, like the forex, which is your currency markets, right? So, I mean, when do you sleep? <laughs> At least with the the stocks and the options, I mean, there's a little window there for you to get some sleep. But I mean, we've known a lot of people that you know in that in just you guys know how Bitcoin is. It's just very hard, and it, it's hard. Let's be very, very frank about this. Anybody that's tried Cryptopia or anything like that, it can be a complicated trade. It can be very difficult to trade and uh, things like that. So let's move on to the next question. That's enough crypto because we don't really play crypto. So we'll talk about it, but it's not our focus. Uh, Samuel, great question, Samuel. Can you please quickly discuss what we think will happen to banks once the marijuana craze takes off? Okay. You have marijuana companies, farms, distributors, uh, CBD makers, you know, what do they call them? The edibles and all that stuff. The, you know, there's just a, a, a massive, massive amount of uh, little offsprings of business types here. What do we think will happen with the banks? Well, you've got all this cash, right? Literally in pallets, uh, in farms and stuff like that. Well, guess what? When they can put them in the bank, what happens? How does a bank make money? Ask yourself, how does a bank make money? Well, you put your money in the bank and then it takes your money and then it goes and invests it and it doubles and triples your money. Okay. So it builds its balance sheet. Guess what? Also too, right now, because it's an illegal drug, you can't have loans. You can't have uh, credit card transactions. It, it's just, it's stopped the flow of money. Money is always most effective when it's moving. Uh, you guys will learn that, uh, you new people that are getting into trading and stuff like that. You'll learn that one of the most exciting things about money, and this goes back to Deepak Chopra, um, money will not move until you excite it. How do you excite it? 
Well, you create loans, you create businesses, you create all these things. That's all good for the banks. Um, they make loans, they make inter, they they make money on the interest. Um, they start investing in these companies. They, you know, there's just a lot of way the banks make money, and this is just fantastic. As soon as those regulations are taken care of, um, it's going to be an explosion. And you know, this is something we've been talking to about our subscribers for a while now, and it's a, why your question is so good. Two things will happen with 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 the marijuana boom when things start really kicking in marijuana stocks will go up and bank stocks will go up so you want to have nice positions nice diverse positions in both that was a great question samuel thank you uh let's see i gotta make it sure it's not it's safe for posting uh laugh on my girlfriend heard you and she disagrees on the being smart thing um not sure. So being smart about what? Uh, if you're more specific, I'll address it. I'm, I promise I won't upset any relationships. Um, so, Marco, Marco, there are trades in and up and in, in up or down markets. You bet. There's trades in both markets. There's trades in a sideways market. There's always something trading. If you look at your, if you look at when you go look at your charts and you're doing your research search and stuff. There's a thing called breadth, B-R-E-A-D-T-H, breadth. And what that tells you is the breadth of the market. Is it stinky <laughs> or is it lemony fresh like you just brush your teeth? Um, the breadth is all it is, is the advancers against the de de decliners, right? And how many are making 52-week highs? How many are making 52-week lows? Now, Anytime you, if the market's down 700 points, right, there's something green. So were you in the right trade? Okay. Uh, so yeah, you can make trades in up or down markets. And we do, we do. Uh, we try to stay very intuitive. We don't limit ourselves to, we don't trap ourselves in a box, but absolutely, Marco, there are trades in up markets. There are trades in down markets. There's trades in sideways markets. Uh, let's see, Marco, uh, Severa, way to go rolling. Hey, Joe Biggs. Welcome, Joe Biggs. He is a Kalihi resident from the neighborhood, man. How are you doing? <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, Samuel Marco Frias. Yes, sweet. Uh, there, there you go. And Samuel helping out there. Thank you, Samuel. Uh, let's see here. Uh, what does your service offer picks? Okay, Nick, this is a good question. You know, um, we're here for market information, but if, if you want to know more about the service, um, one best thing is to click the link and then you can talk to the people that uh, describe it the best. But look, our service, you can ask any of the members. They'll tell you. We talk about, we talk about charting, technical analysis. It's all about um, the members becoming better traders, becoming smarter investors. And so we cover everything. We talk about charts. You can ask the members. Um, we just made a ton of money on Home Depot. Uh, we made anywhere. Some of the subscribers made uh, about 143%. We had a couple of subscribers that actually put trailing stops on it and it made that pop. Um, some of them got 400%. So that was a good trade. Uh, by the way, we've hit 500% uh, plus in a row, uh, including a 200 something percent are in there. Um, but when we were in that Home Depot trade, because when we first got into it, it started to cycle down a little bit. There was a little news flow hurting the, the trade. And we used the charts as an example and we showed people and, and it played out true. Uh, where the support was, where we expected the bounce, what we expected after the bounce. So absolutely, we we don't just pump out picks. Now, if you're the type of person you just want to get a text and just buy it, and then when you get the text, just sell it, we're perfect for that too. But we also have all these things set up, so you'll learn everything you want, okay? Um, and absolutely, we do technical, technical uh, charts, so... Uh, let's see. Um, Samuel, actually, I just let you know what the sectors are. Marijuana, right? If you guys are paying attention, marijuana, banks, right? Short the dollar and long gold. You guys pay attention now. 
I know I look good on camera, but the information is what's important. Be serious about your trading. Uh, let's talk about the Brexit. Absolutely, the Brexit, you know, uh, because Marcus, you know, you asked that perfect question. Do we play up? Do we play down? Look, we were all long going into the Brexit, but the trading team saw what was going to happen on that. And we set up some hedges. We cleaned up on the Brexit. Uh, one of our biggest, biggest two days in the, uh, the market last year. Uh, and we hit that just right. So, Samuel, that's a great question. And that's great information for all of you out there. So you see what like market what Marcus was saying or Marco was saying, look, we were long in that market, but we made some nice, nice hedges. And so when the Brexit hit, guess what? We cashed those in. That market uh, repaired itself in a heartbeat. Remember, that was the V bottom and we we're cashing out the other ones afterwards. That's how you do it. That's being smart. Uh, oh, <laughs> so Vera, I get it now. She's <laughs> she's mad at me for calling you smart. You are a smart guy, man. And she's a smart girl for being with you. You can tell her I said that. Uh, there you go. So we were just talking about this. And this is one of our members. Uh, we, we absolutely put out these videos about charting and stuff like that. So... And we're getting to the end of the question. So, look, does anybody have any more questions, any more comments? You know, just to recap, because Samuel would ask the question. Um, oh, my God. Glenn Williams, veteran, great American. God bless you, Glenn. And thank you for joining us. Um, Glenn is our oldest subscriber. Not old age, old in length of subscription. Um, and thank you, Glenn. Yeah, I know. I actually put on a nice shirt and stuff. Comb my hair. Um, you can thank Samuel for making me look good. He's the one. Makes me shave. Uh, let's see. This is a great. Yeah. And so getting back to your, uh, getting back to your, uh, your comment, Samuel. One second. Getting back to your comment, Samuel. Um, let's, uh, hold on a second. Let me look at that again. Anyways, I'm sorry. Let's move on. Um, please explain why. Yeah, I just posted that link for Nick too. Uh, let's see. And thank you, Glenn. Man, you threw my whole game off when you said that, Glenn. You see, I'm I'm just I lost my train of thought and stuff. <laughs> Good job. Let's see how fast we can confuse Pat. Um, here, another good one from Samuel. Man, Samuel, you're just Full of great questions right now, man. Uh, please explain why trading options is the best way to make money in the market. It is the best way, and I'll tell you why. And this is going to play right into Sever's uh, comment right after about risk versus reward. Look, when you buy a stock, if a stock is $10, right? You buy one share, it costs you $10, okay? If it goes up, it goes down, your, your gains or losses are based on that, right? Now, what if you could go buy and control a contract that gave you control of 100 shares of that same stock for 20 cents, for 20 cents? And why is it? Why do they call it option? Because at the expiration date, you have some options. You can sell the contract to somebody else for a higher price. You can execute the shares. But the reason it's so important, the reason it is so important is because the amount of money you put up and the leverage you get with that and the risk elimination. So if I put $10 into one stock, right? And it goes to zero, right? I've lost $10. I've lost the whole investment. So if I bought one contract of that and it cost me what, 20 cents. I mean, what is that? A $20 order. If that thing goes to zero, I've lost $20. You see how that works? It's leverage. It's uh, risk elimination. Of course, too, with our system, there's there's other things in place, um, buy programs and things like that. Now, again, if you want to know about that, you have to be a member. That's that's uh, proprietary information. But we do actually have uh, other systems in balance and it makes it super low risk. But that's the advantage of options. Uh, everybody says options are high risk. That's because a lot of times a majority of losing trades in options are 100% losses. You'll see that. Very, you know, most option traders don't tap out at 
uh, 10, 12 percent. But the leverage you're getting from your buy, your your power of your money that you're using to purchase, uh, it, it it's a lot less. And so, I mean, it, like I said, if you can control 100 shares of the stock for $20 as opposed to buying one share of the stock, um at ten dollars, you, you you should be able to see the math there. And if you can't see the math, click that link and we'll teach you it. Uh, so that answers that for you, uh, Severa. Uh, the last five trades, last five trades. Uh, let's let's talk about the last five trades. Let me pull it up here. You guys, give me a second here. All right. The last five trades, our last five trades, I'm going to tell you exactly what it was. We we went long on Home Depot. We got 101% on that. We went long on Bank of America. We got 103% on that. We took up a snap position that we sold half at one point for 112%. Then we sold the other half at 262%. Uh, that trade lasted less than 20 days. Right before that, we went long on oil. Eight days, we got 139%. And then right before that, let's go to a six in a row. Uh, we played some Nike calls, and we only got 55% on that. Kind of disappointing after all those hundreds, right? So, yeah. Uh, Marco, thank you for explaining options. Yeah, Marco, no worries. Uh, no, 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 no. And, that, and that's why it's, it's, it's important if you... If, if you if options can be a very confusing thing, I, you guys see it all the time on the internet, right? These guys offer these uh, off option strategy classes and stuff. And the first thing they want to do is teach you straddles and condors. And oh my God, you've never even traded an option before. And they want you to put in a, a three leg trade. That's just absolutely crazy. Um, options can be a very complex thing, but we've turned it into being very simple. Um, because we're simple traders over here, you know. Um, so thank you for explaining. It. Yeah, absolutely, Marco. And anytime, man, you, we're we're here. Uh, uh, pretty much, yeah. The Nigerian brothers on CNBC. Absolutely. Have you ever seen them come out? It's, <laughs> uh, you know, I've got, I've got a, I've got a put call on this, and I've got it. You know, I'm, I'm playing Apple long, and this is how I did it. And he's got like seven versions of an option trade, dude. Seriously, I mean, who's gonna follow that? But that's for a CNBC. I mean, that's what, what they want to do, right? They want to seem so overly intelligent and smarter than everybody else, and really. It's just complicating things, so don't don't bite into that. I mean, it's fun to watch, and it's try, fun to try to figure out. Look, we've been trading options for about 35, 40 years, and I'd say about 10, 15% of the Nigerian brothers' trades, man, we don't even understand. So, and uh, can you please explain how the service is de delivered to clients and what they need to do in order to place the order when we send it? Absolutely. So, when you click the link, right, www.stockpickprofits.com, you'll come to a page and it'll tell you the whole service, what you get for the service and stuff like that. Be sure to read it all the way through. But to address Samuel's question, how is it delivered? First of all, the buy and sells are delivered directly to you text immediately, Okay. The second thing is they're posted within a private Facebook group that you are one of the few exclusive members of. Within the Facebook group, we can have little extended conversations, but immediately that trade goes out to you via text. You can go in, pop it in. The text will tell you exactly how to place your order, and it'll tell you, it'll even have an accompanying video if you're a new trader. You can click the, the video, and guess what? You can buy it with us. Isn't that great? I mean, if you're a new trader and you're unsure, we actually make the model portfolio buy on camera. So you can even follow along like that. And then we go to the Facebook group and you get it posted in there. Um, it's just a fantastic delivery system. You'll never miss a trade. Um, we don't day trade. So it's not like you got to take that text and within 50 seconds get that trading because it's going out of the price. No, 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 no. 
Um, we are swing traders. We we play a little bit more of a long game. You can't. I, I don't like to use the word long because people think five, six years, two years, three years, whatever you think long is. When I say long, I'm, I'm talking maybe 15, 20, 25 days. Sometimes we'll get into that 30, 35 day range. But it's a great service. It's, it's perfect for you people that don't want to put any effort into it except setting up your portfolio and punching in an order. Uh, all, port all brokerages have mobile apps, so you can be at the beach and place a trade. You can be at work and place a trade. You know, you can be working the counter at work. And you're blah, 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 blah. How many times do you see people at McDonald's doing that? How many times do you, do, you, do you, when you see cashiers and stuff doing that, you think they're actually doing something? Nah, they're checking their Instagram and stuff like that. Be different from them. Be different from them. When everybody else is fiddling on their phone, wasting time, you be in there making money. But that's how it works, Samuel. Um, you get it via text immediately. With the text, you get a little recording. Um, if you know what you're doing already and you, you, you're you experienced, guess what? You just go in and place a trade and you're done. Um, if you need a little bit more help in the video, we buy it with you. We buy it right into the model portfolio. All our results are absolutely time stamped and documented. There's no fudging on this. We are very transparent. You guys remember back in April, we had five option washes in a row, zero, 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 zero. We never hid that. We talked about it. We never will hide it. And, and that's what you get with us, full transparency, fast delivery, easy to understand. Anybody can use it. Uh, let's move on here. So I hope that helps you, Samuel. Uh, yeah, Marco, I also thought I understood options. This is important. It's a little conversation before between two viewers. Uh, Marco, I thought I understood options. That's extremely risky. This is not necessarily true if you know what you're doing. But high returns come with high risk and the learning steep curve is steep. The beauty of financial reboot is that they appear to know, appear that they know uh, what they're doing and they tell you exactly what to do. And that's important. Uh, we are fully transparent and we absolutely explain everything for everyone. Like I said, uh, look, when you sign up for the service too, you get access to all the member videos and they'll tell you exactly how to buy. They're very, very, very simple, very detailed. It's nothing like these complicated co uh, companies. It's very, it's built for everyone. It's a beautiful system. And yeah, we're like, you know, we like to at least create the image that we know what we're doing. Um, but we've been pretty successful at it. Look, we're up about 65% for the year. Uh, and that's documented. So, okay. And let's move on here. So I, I don't, thank you. You know, Sever, thank you for all your help, man. And, and posting these little conversations here. Uh, it, it really, you know, it's all about of us. Look, when you join stock pick profits, you become part of a family. You are now part of a family. And just like Sever, Sever is posting all these comments because he's used to being in that private group. And that's what our members do. We're always helping each other. We're always making sure no man is left behind. I'll say it. I've said it before in past shows. I'll say it again. Never look down on another man except to give him a hand up. And that's the way we roll. So let's see. Oh, Nick. Hey, this is a great question, Nick, because we get this a lot. We get this a lot. Um, I trade on Robinhood. Are your, any of your picks supported by them? Absolutely. Every single pick you can buy on Robinhood. We, we have people that use Robinhood. Um, they use it successfully. It's, it's a great thing. Robinhood, just for you viewers that aren't familiar with Robinhood, it's kind of a, it's a neat thing. So you say you put $100 into your Robinhood and you, you want to buy uh, Home Depot, right? And say it's at 45 bucks. And now generally you would have to buy two shares, right? 80 bucks. You can't buy a third share because you only have $20 left and it's, it's 45 bucks for the other share. Robin hood is different. You can say, I want a hundred dollars a home Depot and they'll give it to you. So it adds that flexibility for people with smaller portfolios and it's a great service and nothing we pick is not available on Robin hood. We don't, we don't play obscure stocks or Russian stock exchange or the Canadian stock exchange. Everything we play are legitimate U.S. stocks traded on either the Dow. The, well, the Dow is a window, but a window dressing. So, But it's either on the S&P 500, on the NASDAQ. It's all legitimate. 
The, some might be OTCs, which are your penny stocks. Every now and then we'll play that. But generally with options, because look, you get all that buying power with options, right? Without the risk. So why would you trade these little stocks when you can play something that's that's easy to track, easy to understand, and very familiar with you like a Home Depot? I mean, if I told you some penny stock, you don't know anything about it. And why would you why would you buy that stock when you can play the options on a legitimate company? All right, that's the other side to it. But Robin Hood is great. That Robin. Hey, Samuel, you're flying out. Thank you too, man. It, it, thank you for showing up. You know, um, yeah, just thank you, Samuel. You have a safe flight. Samuel's heading over to the mainland for business. So everybody wish him luck. Uh, Glenn G. Williams, bam. Glenn's giving us the thumbs up. Thank you, Glenn. Um, yeah, so, you know, uh, first show back. So we ran a little long. We've been at about 20 minutes. So uh, we've got a little time. If any of you have any questions, if anybody of you have had any comments, uh, go ahead and fire them over. You know, you've got access. Look, this is a rare thing. And Samuel will tell you this all the time. This is a rare thing. Nobody gets access to the trade team, especially me. So this is one chance for the public to actually ask me a question, okay? Uh, my time is very exclusive and I'm not cheap. So <laughs> uh, it, it, this is your chance for free to ask me a question, uh, which I'm sitting here with the trade team and we'll answer it for you. So take advantage of it. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, Severe Samuel says, have a nice trip. Uh, Santa says, have, have a nice, Sana, I'm sorry, Sana. Uh, have a nice trip. And Roland, Roland, man, again, Roland, dude, kudos to you, man. You, you really made this work, you know? I know the, the system works. I know I'm 100% confident with the system and with our picks, but it takes a certain effort and attitude from the user. Um, and you have that attitude. So good job, good job. So let's, uh, if everybody, if we're not having any more questions, if any more comments, let's go ahead and wrap it up for the day. It was Monday. Like I said, in Hawaii, it's a holiday today. Um, so we're kind of casual today. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow after the market with more updates. So look, uh, share the show with your friends. Um, Definitely share your show, share the show with your friends if you think they can benefit. You know, this is one of those things that this is about sharing information. This is about us all having a nice open conversation. So, you know, if you do want to uh, uh, get involved, the link's down there. But other than that, you know, like I said, this is very exclusive. Nobody gets access to the trade team except for uh, VIP members. Uh, so, well, this is this is the public's chance. Take advantage of it. Uh, let's see, Glenn. Oh, good question, Glenn. I mean, we're back on a marijuana, but any marijuana moves with Trump's pending announcement? Well, I mean, just stick with the two plays that we got right now, Glenn. Uh, we're very confident in both of those. You know, with the United Cannabis, I don't want to say on camera because we're still clients are still uh, members are still buying the 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 new pick, and so let's let them get in. And then we can tell the uh, public what we're playing. But the United Cannabis, we've been building positions on that for about a year, year and a half. So that's uh, CNAB. Um, actually, it's real cheap right now. If you you viewers are out there, um, it's a great little company. Um, so absolutely, if you're looking for a marijuana stock, check that out. But the marijuana moves, it's not going to be like a... Uh, knee jerk move, Glenn. What it's going to be is as these things roll in, you, I mean, you got a lot of moving parts right now, Glenn. You've got this Warren bill that needs to pass through. You've got Trump. Uh, you know, with the federal government, you're never turning a Ferrari, right? Where you can turn on a dime. You're turning an ocean liner. So it takes time. It takes time. And that's why we want to be smart. And uh, Glenn, I'll send that to you. Uh, Aren't you getting the updates, Glenn? I'll send I'll send that to you personally, Glenn. Um, but uh, what we're talking about was, you know, it 
you're turning an ocean liner. So all these things kind of have to slowly gel in. And then you'll have this just incredible explosion. And it's going to be an incredible explosion. We've seen murmurs of it, right? We saw a great murmur of it in December where all those marijuana stocks were moving up. And we know a lot of people were disappointed when Sessions came out and made that statement. And anybody that's really into the trade and anybody that really follows the sector knows that, you know, it really didn't make sense that he made the statement because there's so much push from uh, all these states and, and all these Congress people. Look, I tell you one secret, OK, um, that we only talk to our members about, but we'll share it with the public right now. You're looking for some real good information. Think about this angle. Trump's big thing is the opiate crisis, right? He wants to solve the opiate crisis. That'd be a feather in his hat, right? I mean, it, it's such a it's such a terrible thing, this opioid uh, addiction. Um, and it just seems like there's no answer to it. Well, guess what? The answer is there now. And Trump's realizing it. And that's why you see these changes in tones in his public statements about marijuana and stuff. Um, the CBDs and stuff like that. That is an absolute perfect substitute for the opioids right it's non-addicting it's uh there's versions of it where you don't have the the thc level so you don't get high um it's so accessible the costs are proper um it's it's just a great thing so trump sees this as a way to one solve his opioid crisis which would put a big feather in his cap right but two is look at the money, the tax revenue that's that this thing is generating. If he can get that into that economic uh, growth, man, maybe you're changing a 3% projection to uh, maybe 35 maybe even 4%. I mean, look what it's done in Colorado with the tax revenue. It's just incredible. Um, and hopefully all these states are taking that money and putting it into infrastructure and stuff. So... And the banks will pick up on it. But that's that's what's happening right now is let all these things build into it. The big thing is, the big thing will be, and the and the, the dynamite that will blow this off, off the, off the uh, charts is uh, when the banks, when, when, the, when the banks are okay to take the deposits and stuff like that. When, uh, and in order to accomplish that, the classification of the... Uh, drug has to be changed that's a big thing but trump's you know you can of all the things you can and not say um in uh about trump one thing about it is he's smart and he's hard up for for growth and this is perfect for him this solves two problems and i haven't seen anybody talk about this angle so you're getting it first here it's his solution to the opioid crisis really and that's a big thing to him so and then let's see if there's any other questions. Let's see here. Uh, what's the new? Like I said, Glenn, I'll, I'll send you that information over and tag you. Uh, okay, cool. Just missed it. Ah, no worries. No worries. Yeah, Glenn, you've always been it for the long term. And look, too, we always push this. And you guys, you guys that aren't members that are just checking us out, checking out the show, don't get into this uh, MLM. Uh, mentality. Uh, stay in a uh, winner's mentality, which means that be in it for the long haul. You know, um, we get that question from, from our members all the time. You know, what do you guys mean by the marathon? What do you mean? How long is the marathon? Well, on a, on a big portfolio, 250, 500,000, we say about three years. Yeah, give it all, give it about three years. Within three years, that's always our goal with our VIP clients. If you come to us with a quarter of a million dollars, um, our guarantee is within three years to, to uh, double that or bring you to a million dollars. Um, so, uh, but that's that's a bigger portfolio. If you're a trader, you're just getting into trading, maybe you got 5000 10000 maybe you got $500, you're on Robinhood. Give it a year. And look at it. And if you've gotten substantial gains, now obviously to take five thousand dollars to a million, it's 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 a really really wild prospect, right? It's a big big trip. Um, so what you want to do is after a year, analyze your situation and make sure that you're getting proper gains. And that's why we say, uh, like we had that rough April, right? And and I think our uh, 
our overall for the year got down to about 11 percent and stuff and, and we we're just telling people look it's look at it a big time frame if you're going to live this day to day uh, you're never going to make money at stocks. You're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days. Uh, and that's all it's going to be. It's going to just going to be rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. But if you have that long term frame, look, so a month and a half ago, we were up about 11, 18, 11 to 18 percent. Today, we're up 65 percent. So you see how that works. You got to give it that year to work out uh, if you're wondering what the marathon is. Yeah. But. Uh, Nick Carson says he'd be happy with 50% on 30K. Absolutely, man. 50% is a nice gain. Um, had you been with the service from the beginning of the year, you'd be up 65%. So that'll make you happy. Uh, do we have any more questions? Uh, anybody else want to talk about anything, any subjects, anything like that? I'll give you a second, but you know, let's, 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 um, let's just recap the market then. So, you know, like it, it because the Bitcoin trade, it, that's something that we really enjoy talking about. And Bitcoin is so fun. If nothing else, it's fun. The conversations it creates on the, uh, message boards and stuff, just the trying to understand it, learning it. I mean, think about it all. Oh, Immediately, one benefit that Bitcoin gave to traders and society is we all became a little smarter. We had to understand blockchain. We had to understand central banking and all the benefits of it and stuff. Uh, you know what I mean? So it's a fun subject. Yeah. So we're going to go with one last question. Then we're going to cut the show for the day. We'll be back tomorrow. So don't worry about that. Um, the minimum amount they can... You know, this is a good question, too. There is no minimum. There is no minimum. It's uh, generally it's it's easiest if per trade on our tracker. Now, we run this tracker, right, which is the actual trades and stuff. And all the members get access to it. And, and it's so that it's an honest, honest uh, uh, assessment of the trades we've been making and the progress we made for the year. We base that on $200 a trade. That means every trade you're playing $200. If I'm not mistaken right now, we're into six trades. I think we've got six live trades right now. We just cashed out those 500% in a row on the one 200%. Uh, so we're down to about six trades. So you think about that. If you're in all six trades, you've got $1,200 on the board. $1,500 portfolio, isn't that great? You've got six great plays and you've got 300 bucks cash in your pocket, right? So, Nick, uh, average return the last five years, we don't go back five years. Uh, we only started the company about a year and a half, two years ago. So, I can tell you in 2016, we ended up with, I think it was 169% for the year. 2017 was a little flat. Um, in 2018, we're up about 65%. Yeah. Uh, and that's the farthest I can go back there for you. Uh, we weren't a company before that. but So, yeah, let's close with that question um, with Samuel. And that's how that's how it is. Look, look at the buy. That's the buying power of options, right? I mean, if you literally you would be in six trades right now with us, you'd have twelve hundred dollars on the board. You can even go one hundred dollars and, and only have six hundred dollars on the board. You should have a little bit of cash. Um, in case you want to buy some more, uh, you, if you're with us, you've just cashed out five hundred uh, percent in a row, you know, and think about it. I, if you here's a little tip for all you viewers before we sign off. OK, um, think about it. If you buy. Two hundred dollars with the options, OK, and it goes to zero, you lose two hundred dollars. That's it. That's it. You can't lose any more than that. If you get one hundred percent on it, you've made four hundred dollars. So. Right there, just with that simple technique, you already, if you win 50% of your trades, you're making money. Not bad, huh? Not bad. So let's close it up on the show. Nick says, thank you. Thank you, Nick, man. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for viewing. All of you that are, that are watching the show, please share the show. Um, links there on the bottom if you want to uh, get involved. Um, what will happen is when you sign that, you'll get on a call and you'll get on a call directly with myself and Samuel and 
and we'll make sure that everything's right um, because it is an exclusive service. Uh, the goal of the service is to make a thousand millionaires. Um, and so you need to be right for the service, not just for us. Okay. And Marco, thank you for all the great info. Marco, thank you for coming. Um, we'll be back tomorrow about 30 minutes after the market closes. Now, the easiest way, if you want to, uh, if you want to, um, I'm going to post this for you guys. Let me just copy it here. I'm going to, I want to post this for you guys. Now, the easiest way to get alerted, um, when the show's starting, because we like to start about 30 minutes after the market, but if it's a busy day and stuff, we might start a little early. We might start a little slower. Just like the page, okay? Just like uh, the investing lovers, right? And right when we go live, you'll get an alert, okay? This will be posted on our YouTube and all the normal channels, all the normal medias. But make it easy on yourself. That's what we're all about in Financial Reboot. Making it easy, making it simple. Just like the page, and that way when you get the alert, you just tune on. You don't have to go check YouTube and all this stuff. You know what I mean? Make it easy. And as always, uh, when you go out there, make a difference, man. Make a difference, okay? So we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you very much for tuning in. Sana, thank you. One more time, let's do the little scrolling link in case you guys want to get involved. Um, it was just as much of a pleasure today as, for us as it probably was for you. <laughs> That's a nice assumption. Uh, we'll talk to you guys tomorrow. We'll see you about a half hour after the market.